A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. One night while Paul was in Cornet, the Lord said to him in a vision, Do not be afraid. Go on speaking, and do not be silent, for I am with you. No one will attack and harm you, for I have many people in this city. He settled there for a year and a half and taught the word of God among them. But when Galileo was proconsul of Archaea, the Jews rose up together against Paul and brought him to the tribunal, saying, This man is inducing people to worship God contrary to the law. When Paul was about to reply, Galileo spoke to the Jews. If it were a matter of some crime or malicious fraud, I should with reason hear the complaint of you Jews. But since it is a question of arguments over doctrine and titles, and your own law, see to it yourselves. I do not wish to be a judge of such matters. And he drove them away from the tribunal. They all seized Sothenus, the synagogue official, and beat him in full view of the tribunal. But none of this was of concern to Galileo. Paul remained for quite some time, and after saying farewell to the brothers, he sailed for Syria, together with Priscilla and Aquila. At Sencrii, he had shaved his head because he had taken a vow. Verbum Domini. God is king of all the earth. All you peoples, clap your hands. Shout to God with cries of gladness. For the Lord, the Most High, the Awesome, is the great King over all the earth. God is King of all the earth. He brings people under us, nations under our feet. He chooses for us our inheritance, the glory of Jacob, whom he loves. God mounts his throne amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid trumpet blasts. Sing praise to God, sing praise. Sing praise to our King, sing praise. God is King of all the earth. Dominus vobiscum. Lexio sancti evangelii secundum Ioannem. Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, amen, I say to you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will become joy. When a woman is in labor, she is in anguish because her hour has arrived. But when she has given birth to a child, she no longer remembers the pain because of her joy that a child has been born into the world. So you also are now in anguish. But I will see you again, 
and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy away from you. On that day, you will not question me about anything. Amen, amen, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Verbum Domini In our walk with God, the Lord will often send us on a road that is unfamiliar to us. And sometimes we can see this road is dangerous and arduous. And when we look, we say, how will I do this? Oh, this seems very difficult. But today, we are assured of much hope. Through the words of Jesus, that we face times of anguish, times of sorrow, but there's always joy. And then also with the word the Lord gave to St. Paul, his assurance of his protection, of his help. And here in this first reading today, you know, St. Paul is feeling the daunting and frightening task of entering a territory that is, of course, very dangerous. Well, at the same time, you know, he's exhausted. He's been working very hard. He goes from place to place. These are his, his missionary journeys here, and so now he's in Corinth. Well, he's been there for a little bit, but he's in Corinth now, and he's, he's feeling a little afraid. You know, God keeps asking more of him. And again, he's, he's worn down. He's scared. But then we see that the Lord says to him, do not be afraid. He says, I am with you. And so St. Paul, you know, he... He has to go before, uh, uh, go, go before the proconsul, and you know the Jews are accusing him of, of course, blasphemy and his teachings are wrong. And they go before this uh, leader, uh, Galileo, and Galileo, you know, looks upon the case. You know, Saint Paul perhaps is right there, maybe, maybe a bit nervous. You know, he doesn't know what they're going to do to him. I mean, he's already been beaten several times, harshly treated, but there he is. But what does God do? God, God is, is with him right here very much, and he's always with us, but yet Galileo is a, is a very fair man and, and just, as some of the commentaries say. And so he says, no, I'm not, I, this, is, this has nothing to do with me and with my judgment. So he lets him go. Then they, of course, then they, they take it out on this uh, leader of the synagogue named Sosthenes, poor man. But yet, God delivers St. Paul. And then again, we hear today of Jesus exhorting the disciples. Jesus tells them, he says, you're, you're, is this going to be a time of anguish here? You're in anguish. Oh, you know, Jesus is about to go away. He's about to... Uh, be arrested, imprisoned, so to take up the cross and be crucified. You know, the, 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 the disciples will experience great grief. But then Jesus assures them that, that this grief, that this sorrow will turn into joy. They are at a, at a state in their spiritual life where uh, they're still kind of young. You know, they, don't, they didn't have the infusion of the Holy Spirit yet. You know, the, the fire inside of them. And, and we know what happens afterwards is that they, they scatter. They're, they're just not that strong in faith yet, in, in the love of the Lord. 
But of course, we will see this grow afterwards. And so this is what, what we need to take here, my brothers and sisters. We take the word of St. Paul, the assurance of God's presence with us, not to be afraid. And then we take the words of Jesus that says, yes, you will have grief. Yes, you will have sorrow. But you also have joy. And now many of us, you know, we often, like as I was saying earlier, we come to times in the, in the spiritual life where God changes the rope. God changes the tracks. Okay, and he has us maybe go into some unfamiliar places. Or, you know, often we're, you know, we're, we're very comfortable in what we're doing in our service with God, in our spiritual life. After a while, it just gets easy. You know, it's comforting. Um, and then, you know, God brings us something else. Well, first and foremost, we, we got to look at how we approach this. God desires to do a great work in each and every one of us. And sometimes we could resist that a little bit. See, but we need to be, again, strengthened by the words of Jesus, that the words of God, that he is always with us. So very often he's going to take us out of the comfort zones. It could come in, in, in different forms. He may open a, a new door to us and something that we've never really done before. You know, maybe uh, ministering or um, reaching out to people we've never encounter or sometimes he takes something away from us or somebody away so how will i go without them or again he will uh you know he may he may bring us into some service that you know uh, that may be that may seem very hard very strenuous but what is it what is he doing here he's increasing our faith he's increasing our love in him and he wants us to unite this, to give this to him. So it's, it's ultimately a way where we become more dependent on the Lord. And we need to be open to this and accept what he's placed before us. You know, it's for, for some of those out there, as, uh, um, as I'm saying here, you know, uh, we, we, we encounter some darkness sometimes, some grief. And uh, it, it feels like there, there's no way out. But yet we can, we can do two things. We can give in to the fear, we give in to the doubt, or we can take it to God. Now, I know somebody around here, and I've known many people like this, but someone around here, about within the last year, their son passed away. And, you know, they experienced the grief of this. It was a very trying time. And, you know, this person is very active in serving the Lord, always talking to people about Jesus, saying to them how much Jesus loves them, showing people great mercy. And, but when she found out the loss of her son, of course, it, 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 was, it was crushing her. But then she gave it to God. She accepted the cross. She went about continuing to talk about Jesus, praising the Lord. And even in the, in the grief and the sadness there, God gave her joy. So, yeah, you know, we can, we can go through some hard times and then God gives us an abundance of joy. But even in the trials, those who, us who have received the Holy Spirit, the Lord is inside of us. And we, remember, I, I speak this very often, we live the mysteries of his life. And we can see that the, the hard times, the trials, the changes in our lives, the new things God brings to us, we can see it as opportunity to share deeper in the life of Jesus Christ. Just as this woman I'm talking about, she, she embraced it. And so even during the, the times of grief, the times of sadness, she still has joy. We think back to uh, in the book of Acts here, earlier on, when, when the, the first Christians they suffered this great persecution, but yet they were joyful because they were suffering like Jesus Christ. And so this is, of course, St. Paul too. But again, you know, sometimes, it, sometimes you know, we, we don't know how we're going to go on. As St. As Paul here today is, is, is experiencing. 
You know, Corinth was a very evil city, just saturated with sin and darkness. And, you know, he's, again, worn out. But yet God makes a way. Also at the same time, sometimes um, we can look at what, what we're doing now. And God may not be opening any doors for us. So all we see is, the, is, that, is that the work we do for the Lord, the service we're in, the, the state of our lives is, is monotonous and tedious. See, it's, it's at that time we, we cannot cave in once again to, to doubt, but give it to the Lord. Today, uh, we also celebrate uh, the memorial of a, of a great Franciscan saint. His name is uh, Saint Ignatius of La, La, Laconi. And this saint did the same thing for 40 years. He was a Capuchin uh, Franciscan friar, and he lived uh, from 1701 to like 1781. And what he, what he did every day was go collect alms and beg. But it's, it's God's work. Look, at he, do, he does that for 40 years. And I'm sure there were times when maybe he was a little tired. You know, doing the same thing day in, day out, day in, day out. But again, you know, no doubts. No fears. Just keep giving it to God. He makes a way where there is no way. And so, uh, you know, I remember back in, in the seminary, when, when you enter, you know, and it's new, um, you th they just throw everything at you. And it's, oh, how am I going to do this? I've got to be here for six years. And, you know, many of the, of the other seminarians who had been there later, they says, hey, if God brings you to it, he will get you through it. So same, same thing here. You know, but, but this, whatever he brings before us, we unite it to him, and it's a way that he increases the theological virtues into us, faith, hope, and love. There's always increase, but we've got to just be willing to accept and move on. Just like St. Paul, he continues in steadfastness and faithfulness to God. Sometimes we won't have all the answers, and God will just reveal them to them slowly. But all the while, he's increasing our faith. So, once again, my brothers and sisters, we give it to God knowing that if he brings us to something, he will get us through it. And so take the words of St. Paul as that, though, you know, uh, this, is, this is faith, though what we can see is, though we, go, we come across sometimes what, what we cannot see. But he says that, that faith is not so much what we can see, but what we can see. For the things we see are temporary, but the things that we do not see are eternal. And this is God. This is being with him. God bless you all.